today's song is going to be Michelle by the Beatles. I'm going to be doing this in standard tuning without a capo. If you want to play along with the recording, put a capo on your first fret, taking you from the key of E to the key of F. The recording will sound one fret higher. So getting right into this, starting with the intro, I have my third finger. I'm going to slide to the ninth fret. I'm going to hold my first finger and my second finger on the high E 7th fret, B string 8th fret. I'm hybrid picking with my right hand, so my slide, the pick there was with the pick. I'm going to use my middle finger and ring finger to pick the B and the high E together once I'm holding those two notes at the 7th and 8th fret. The intro is going to feature a descending riff where the only thing that changes is the G string going chromatically, going one fret at a time down from the ninth to the eighth. I have two fingers moving, but the G note, G strings note, was the only note that changed. So I'm still at the eighth fret of the B, but now I'm also at the eighth fret of the G. I'm going to pick the G again with my pick and use my uh, middle finger and ring finger to get the B and G. Descending again, one more fret, still chromatically. Seventh fret G. Eighth fret B, seventh fret high E. One more time. So that was ninth G, eighth G, 7th G, 6th G. I do play one more note on the G, but this time at the 5th fret, I'm going to bar my first finger across the 5th fret, getting the high E, B, and G. My pinky is going to play the high E at the 7th fret. You could use your ring finger. I like my pinky. And I'm strumming all three of those strings now. Taking my pinky off, and then this is why I barred there. When I take my pinky off, I want to hold the fifth fret to pick that note. Picking now the eighth fret of the B string with my pinky holding that note. That all sounds like this together. Last thing I do to complete this riff is slide into the 8th fret on the G, holding the high E and B with my first finger to now strum those three strings. Da, 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 da. All right, so the entire intro once slowly. I need are E major, A minor 7, D major, and I also need a C sharp diminished. That's going to put my first finger at the 4th fret A, my 3rd finger at the 5th fret D, my middle finger at the 4th fret G, and my pinky at the 5th fret B, and a B7. If you can bar it, great. B7 in the open position would work just as well when you can bar that one. It's an easier change to go from me to there, because I'm going to come right back back again. All right, that's going to be the chords for part A. I have one measure on E, one measure on A minor 7, 
one measure on D, one measure on the C sharp diminished, B7, changing back to the C sharp diminished just for a beat to come right back to B7. First time through the song, you're going to hear all of that twice. E major, A minor 7, D major, C sharp diminished, B7, C sharp, B7, and it repeats. Only does it repeat in the first time through the song. After that, it's going to be strictly one time from part A to part B. Part B has two measures on E minor. G, one measure. C, one measure. B7, one measure. A minor, one measure. Now, the end of this part is actually going to get played over what you did in the intro. So you can technically come up and do all of that again. If for whatever reason you're singing and playing at the same time, uh, the chord changes are difficult to get to, you want to play it down here in the open position, all of this can be done over E minor. I'm going to move my D string using that as my bass note to the first fret. Remember our descending line. This is it right here. D string open. I need to go down one fret from D, so that's going to be my A string at the fourth fret. But I don't want the D string to ring open with this one, so I'm going to hold my first finger at the second fret of the D. That would have taken me from here. if you can't bar the whole thing, or... So this will be part B going all the way back around to part A, playing them both one time through from B to A. I did my G7 there as a bar chord instead of the G in the open position that I had done in the first part of the video. If you're going to do the G7, I prefer it as the G7 bar chord with this note instead of this note. For me, it doesn't fit the sound of the song there, but the G major fits just as well if you can't get the bar chord. So that's it. Intro, part A and part B of Michelle. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're getting something out of it. Send me a message. Give me a thumbs up, a subscribe. Make a request. Come back soon. Thanks.